VC, verify Falcon 9 is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. Minus 30. All gas calls us complete. T minus 20. Stage 1 tanks pressing for flight. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, zero, lift off, five. Looking at the first stage of the Falcon 9 rocket after a successful liftoff from Kennedy Space Center. The rocket is just about to pass through max Q, which is the maximum aerodynamic pressure that the rocket will see throughout its entire flight. Normally we see a shockwave right around this time forming, but it doesn't look like there's going to be enough light to see that shockwave. Sounds like Max Q is passed and we've throttled back up those Merlin 9 engines. Merlin vacuum bleed in has started. This is when we chill down that MVAC uh, engine on the second stage, just like we did for those first stage engines. looking like the trajectory looks good. There's a few events that are going to be happening in rapid succession very soon here. Uh, the first one is going to be the main engine cutoff of the first stage. So those nine Merlin engines are going to shut off directly after that. A beautiful sight here on the Space Coast at 2 a.m. this morning. A Falcon 9 rocket blasting off from Launch Complex 39A, a successful launch. Uh, SpaceX pretty excited about this, uh, uh, their first uh, communication satellite from Echo Star that they're delivering to space. The, the uh, satellite will actually be delivered officially at 34 minutes after launch, so that's uh, about uh, uh, 20 or uh, 31 minutes from now. So uh, pretty uh, exciting for them, exciting for us to see. We, we could feel uh, the vibrations, you could hear that rumble out here, uh, and just uh, uh, bright lights in the in the quite dark, dark sky, clear sky here on the Space Coast. So we're going to have much more about the mission, let you know about the satellite and its condition uh, coming up throughout the morning uh, right here. But that's the latest live here at the Kennedy Space Center. I'm Jerry Hume reporting.
Because of the low temperatures in the forecast, the Coalition for the Homeless of Central Florida is opening its doors to people who need a warm place to stay. News 13's Sharon Stone joins us in downtown Orlando. And Sharon, the shelter is changing the rules tonight. The coalition calls this an official cold night. It means they will not turn anyone away who needs shelter. The people bundled up are a sign it's cold outside. The declaration of a cold night by the Coalition for the Homeless of Central Florida means it's serious. The cold air tends to bring about, it'll exasperate situations where there may be some health concerns already. Uh, it'll make those worse. Wednesday, the coalition will not turn any person seeking shelter away. That is regardless of space. They'll sleep in this room here and we'll provide them sleep overnight and then we'll provide breakfast for them the next day. We've gone out to make sure we have enough blankets to meet that. It seems we have uh, sufficient blankets, but we always can use blankets. The coalition says their men's service center accommodates 250 people and the Center for Women and Families accommodates 240. Cold nights, they expect to see an additional 50 to 60 people on top of those numbers. We want to provide a place for them to stay that's nice and warm and give them a meal and help them out. The coalition declares a cold night when the temperature drops below 40 degrees. Reporting on scene in Orlando, Sharon Stone, News 13. Advocates are also preparing several homeless shelters in the Daytona Beach area. A spokesperson for Halifax Urban Ministries says the homeless will be brought to three different shelters throughout the area. The organization also provides clothing for men and women. We always have blankets and coats. We have all kinds of things like that that we provide. Um, clothing that we have at the clothes closet that we give out. Yeah, we have those kinds of things for people. A fourth shelter may open up if there's an excess in number of people. Sky 13 was over the scene when a brush fire broke out just after 6 o'clock along State Road 50 near the St. Johns River. The fire was nearly 1,300 acres and at one point shut down State Road 50 because of the smoke. Fire officials say the fire was initially under control before spreading again. Police arrested a former Brevard Public Schools bookkeeper accused of embezzling funds. Officials say Patricia Coleman embezzled more than $96,000 from O'Galley High School and more than $22,000 from the Cape Coast Conference. They say she also embezzled more than $50,000 while acting as treasurer for two rodeo associations. These are dollars that are primarily raised for kids, by kids, to fund field trips, activities, functions, extracurricular activities. Now, Dr. Blackburn, the Brevard School Superintendent, says they will not allow their children to suffer from the missing funds. Coleman is being held on bond of more than a million dollars. President Donald Trump's travel ban is once again on hold. A federal judge in Hawaii issued the ruling just hours before the ban was set to go into effect. In the 43-page ruling, the judge concluded the executive order failed to pass legal muster and the plaintiffs showed a strong likelihood to succeed in their lawsuit against the ban, which claimed the order discriminated against Muslims. But President Trump doesn't appear to be backing down. 